verse number three. John chapter nine, verse three. Thank you, Pastor, for this opportunity. Thank you for challenging my life, my wife. Thank you to the ministers that are here and to the church. God is truly, truly here and doing something special. And so as you open up your Bibles to John chapter nine, verse three. The Bible reads like this, Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works in him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no man could work. As long as I am In the world, I am the light to the world. Then he said these things and he spat on the ground and he made clay with saliva. He anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. Then he said to him, go and wash in the pool of Salaam, which is translated as sent. Father, once again, we thank you for what you're going to do. Move tonight. Remove me completely. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, church, tonight, you could really feel that open heaven. How many can say amen? Amen. And with that being said, we have to protect that portal. I began to hear our pastor when he came back from Boston talking about our church being a portal. I didn't understand what that word truly meant. But when I begin to describe what a portal is, it's going to make a lot of sense. A lot of us have an opportunity to shop online. And when we shop online, we could go to any 7-Eleven because there's a portal that's there. We could actually go online with our phones. We could order pizza, and there's a pizza portal at every Little Caesars. But the reason why I'm bringing up a portal is because our church is a portal of an open heaven. And the way that we have access to that open heaven is when we pray, when we worship, and when we fast. In order to open up a portal... When you get to Little Caesars or to 7-Eleven, you've seen the lockers. You have to have a code to unlock the box. And I want to let you know, church, every time we come to our service, every time we come and we worship, God is allowing us a code. But you won't be able to understand the code that God has given if you're not in prayer, if you're not in worship, and you're not fasting. So the only way to gain access to the portal of what God wants to do in your life and your family is you have to understand that we stand under open heaven and we have to protect. Here in this portion of scripture, the Bible is talking about a young man, a man that was blind. And one of the things I love about this story, and many of you may have even preached on this story, but one of the things that I love about this story is God, God's creative miracle. God's creative miracle when he anointed the man with the mud of the ground. The Bible said that he spat on the ground. He made an ointment. He rubbed it on the blind man's eyes. Then he told the blind man to work his way to the pool. The reason why I'm using the word or the phrase to work your way to the pool, because revival is not instantaneous. Revival takes work. And although you have a desire, a pursuit, a hunger, a desire to see what God is showing you, not only does it take humility, repentance, but then it also takes a little bit of work. You got to get your way to that pool. What I love about this story is the same way that God recreated this man's vision is the same way God created us. The Bible says in the book of Genesis that we were made from the dust of the earth. So what I believe truly happened is God recreated his vision to see what God was trying to show him. So imagine a young man over years just having a desire to see but not being able to see, but then hearing about the Messiah. People are going to come to our church because they're going to hear about the Messiah. And they're going to be blind. They're not going to be able to see. 
But when they come and they hear of God and they hear that the Messiah is here, God is going to anoint them. And not only is God going to anoint them, God is going to ask them to go wash in the pool of Salaam. Now, when we talk about this pool, this is the same pool. I don't know if you picked it up last week or a couple weeks ago when Pastor Augie was talking about that water. What he was talking about when he talked about the priests having the water and then spilling the water over, what he was describing was the feast of the tabernacle. The feast of the tabernacle. Now, there's three pilgrimages that took place where the Israelites had to go to Jerusalem or the, the Jews had to go to Jerusalem. There's three times a year they had to do it. We know it was Passover, Pentecost, but the third time, you know what the third time was? It was the feast of the tabernacle. Our church is a tabernacle. You say, well, what's the difference between a temple and a tabernacle? Is that a tabernacle moves. A tabernacle can move. Chula Vista satellite can move. Can you hear what I'm saying? Your city life group can move from one home to another home. Sukkot, S-U-K-K-O-T. God woke me up at 4 o'clock on Tuesday morning, this Tuesday morning, to begin to di- di- give me a clearer understanding of what he was talking about. And that's found in John chapter 7, verse uh, 37. I need to read it so that you understand this tabernacle or this feast of the tabernacle. It says, on the last day of the feast, Jesus stood out crying, if anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me also believes in scripture and out of the heart will flow rivers of living water. Rivers of living water will flow. So what was taking place was this whole feast is literally what, what's happening right now in our church. It was a time of an Uh in-gathering. Our pledge is a time of in-gathering. Define it. It's a time when we come to honor our tabernacle and to protect our tabernacle so that we could see it grow. They will come and they will bring their first fruits to the temple and they will offer a sacrifice And that sacrifice was saying, God, I want to come and I want to sacrifice because you've been too good good to me. You've been too good to me, so I need to come and I need to bring my sacrifice. When we bring our pledge to God, we're saying, God, here's my pledge, here's my sacrifice. This feast of ingathering, this feast was a place that not only did they bring their sacrifice, but then they lit, they brought light. There was no electricity, so they brought light to the temple. The Bible says that it was so bright that it lit every courthouse. It was so bright that it lit up into Galilee. It was so bright. Our church, when you bring your sacrifice, we let off such a light that it's not just for what is around us, but what is for, for past us. I really believe that we are in a time of celebration. The last day of this feast was a time of celebration. Celebration of what God had done. Celebration of the 40 years of manna. 40 years of, the, of that Jesus always provided water. Even if it took hitting a rock and c- creating a miracle in the wilderness, God always provided. I want to let you know, church, whether you believe it or not, God always provides. So what this sacrifice indicated, the sacrifice indicated a, a time of gratitude and a time of grace. So when we come to the house of God, all we're doing, all we're saying is, God, thank you that you are faithful. God, thank you. Protect my heart so that the rivers can flow through my heart. You know, let me define rivers because sometimes we don't understand, but rivers could be peaceful. Rivers could be violent. Rivers could be a lot of fun. But rivers could also be deadly. 
when we ask for rain and we ask God to move in our lives, you know, another thing water brings is it brings weeds. You know, we love the rain. We talk about the river. But can we talk about the weeds? Because sometimes when God begins to outpour his spirit, and if your heart's not right, things begin to surface. But God is raising up a church that is willing to lay their heart down and say, God, everything that you've given to me, I'm willing to give it back to you because you have been faithful to me. So the river is of God. To drink of the rivers, to drink of God. The release of the river is the releasing of God. And now we represent the feast. God is able to bring the feast to us. I have to share this and I'll close. We heard a powerful message in Joel chapter 2 that we will be able to reap the harvest at the same time as planting. You guys heard that powerful message on Sunday that our pastor brought, right? What that water represented when the priest will, will turn that water over, it represented the early rain. It represented that God will pour water in the winter time. And if God poured water in the winter time, in the spring, the harvest will be plentiful. I want you to understand that as God began to pour his water significantly in October, that's the winter. That was a foreshadowing of what's going to happen in the spring. And so I'm going to declare to every listener here that this is a time to celebrate because your harvest is going to be so large, you're not going to be able to grab all the fruit. Because your labor in the Lord has been so disciplined and decisive that God is going to be faithful enough to give you the fruit of the land. So we see that this was a season of early rain and also a representation of the latter rain. The grain, the oil, and the wine. The Passover, the, the Pentecost, and the tabernacle. And as they come... I want to let everyone know that Jesus is the best farmer. Jesus is the best farmer. This feast of the tabernacle simply represented a feast of illumination. That those who are thirsty will be able to come and drink. I'm going to close with this. There's a difference between a dream and a vision. The Bible says that in the last days he will pour his spirit out on all flesh and that the older men will have dreams and that the younger men will see visions. So Pastor Vic, what's the difference between a dream and a vision? A dream, you're unconscious, but a vision, you are conscious. Meaning you're alive, you're seeing, you're awake and you're seeing. When Paul, Saul, fasted for those three days and Alan Ananias was asked to go see him and he was fearful, those three days represented, remember, he could not see for three days and he fasted. When Ananias came to him and prayed over him, his sight returned. I want you to understand that whether you are, whether they come or you go, you are a man and woman that will bring sight to those who are blind. The pool, when he had to go and wash, represented sight. 2020 vision, clarity. As you are obedient to the Holy Spirit to the leading of the Holy Spirit God is raising in our church Ananiases people who are blind that have a desire to see they are in a place where God struck them got their attention but will we be obedient to go and pray for them will we, will we be 
obedient to grab them by the hand and lead them to the disciples. What we are talking about right now is a season, a time of evangelism, but not only evangelism, but discipleship. If you could stand with me tonight. We all have an assignment, church, to go make disciples. It's going to be so beautiful on Sunday night when we have the baptism. So beautiful when we're able to see men and women come, get saved, filled with the Spirit, and then baptized. It's going to be so beautiful to see our, our congregation multiply. It's going to be so beautiful to see your, your group just multiply because you're obedient to go into a places that not many people want to go would you lift your hands right there as a sign of gratitude that's why you would lift your hands at this time and just begin to thank God say God I thank you my heart is right before you I want to make sure that when you call on me I will go God I thank you that you're preparing a place not just for me, but for my family and for my extended family and for my loved ones. Father, I pray, God, for every ingathering fruit that will come into this house, that you would multiply and that you would bless your people. I pray that we would be the light to the world. I pray that we would be that river where our heart is so filled that rivers of living water will flow from us, oh God. I pray that we would be saturated in your presence, oh God. And I pray that we would be able to have boldness as a lion to tell others of your goodness. Father, we love you and we thank you. Right there we are, just begin to worship the Lord. Begin to thank God. However this man ministered to you, Sing it. 